fellow champions of hobby excellence. Here we go for another round of, Jesus, God love us, another round of this miniature dork universe shit. Well, it's not shit because we're going to do some cool stuff. Um, so what we have set up here is a little example, a little 15 mil example. Um, our wasp carrier has just approached a an entrenched stand of Germans and we're going to have a flame attack against these guys. So the gamer will roll whatever dice their particular rule system allows for and they're going to hit all sixes. And uh, you know, we've all been watching Miniature Dork Universe so all of our terrain looks really cool and our painting and decals look awesome and our bases have little fucking labels on it. Um, so this just won't do to have a flame attack without flame until now. And here comes our flames. Boof. Take that, you suckers. And the uh, purpose of today's video will be to show you how I make these flames. There are some videos out there on this topic in different scales. Some people light them up and all kinds of crazy stuff. All kinds of good-looking things. This is a fairly simple solution and fairly easy to create. Um, I've often seen people use uh, like a green foliage and spray paint it black and then dry brush the fiery oranges and reds and whatever on it, which is a way to do it. But the way I do it, as is the way I do just about everything, is a little bit different. <laughs> so. Without further ado, let's go into the process of this excellence so that, you know, when you're on your table, all of your flame-throwing vehicles can have a flame stream that looks pretty bloody cool and uh, definitely makes the flame-throwing vehicle stand out as such. Let's go. Right then, so where do we start? We'll start here. So I've seen people do these flame thingies, whatever we're going to call them, flame streams or whatever, um, using green foliage and then they spray paint it um, black and dry brush on the fiery colors. When I've done that in the past, I've used like, um, you know, spray can spray paint, you know, from the hardware store and you have to spray the shit out of it to turn it black for one. You know, and even after you spray the shit out of it and look at it, there's still green on it. And you have to spray it some more and some more and some more. And you inhale so many fumes that by the time you're done, you just wake up in a pool of your own pee and you don't know where you are. So, to avoid this, I have decided to use this stuff, which is Woodland Scenics Fall Foliage. And they have this awesome orange color. And what makes it awesome, let's see if this focus it will stop being a dick. What makes it awesome is that there's little flecks of yellow and red sort of mixed in, so it is very fiery. Um, so using that as a base will cut out the need to bloody well paint it. I'm still going to use some paint in my airbrush to sort of highlight it and add smoky sort of effect to it. Um, I looked at actual photos of these flamethrower streams flying out of like a, um, you know, more modern color picture. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's where I sort of base my color choices on. So what you'll need is some of this foliage. If you don't have it, I mean, you can just use the green shit that you have and do the thing where you spray paint it black and blah, blah, blah. And there's other videos on people doing that, but this is how I do my fucking shit. So get your orange stuff if you want to do something my way, <laughs> which... Maybe people are like, no, don't do anything that guy's way. Listen to him, he's messed. So that's first thing you'll need. Second thing you'll need is some kind of uh, tubing or whatever. This will be the um, sort of the post that your flame jet will go through that holds it up. And you'll also need some type of a base. In this case, I'm using a round plastic base, but you can use whatever basing material that you um, generally like to use. Keep it consistent with the rest of your stuff. You will need a piece of steel wire. 
In this case, I have a 17 gauge guitar string because that's what I have. But for these ones, I had a piece of steel wire that I bought from a hobby store. You know, hobby stores that sell model train stuff often have um, steel wires of different gauges that you can use for building armatures or, um, yeah, I don't know all, everything those model train guys do, but they do have it. Um, as an alternative to these plastic uh, posts for putting, so one will drill a hole through the post, put their wire armature through, and then start sticking the foliage on it to resemble flames. As an alternative, you could use uh, acrylic, like a clear acrylic, to hide the post underneath, but I find you don't really see the post underneath. I've done my basing, so it sort of hides it, and when you put the base on, you know, other terrain pieces, it, it really camouflages it out. And the, you know, the bright oranges and yellows of the flame stream are so um, extreme against it that you barely, you don't really see it, which is kind of cool. But you could use this as an alternative. The reason why I don't is because I'm using very, uh, very small drill bits, you know, like a 0.7 or something to drill through it. And it's, this stuff is just really tough. So if you, I'm just too lazy to dig out my Dremel to do it. I like to use my little hand pin vise, but you know, if your Dremel is right there, you could easily drill through this with a Dremel. Um, you have to be careful not to bust your drill bit, but this was much easier for me to drill through with a hand drill bit. This would be a little more challenging, um, but not impossible. So there is that option. We will move on to first step. The initial step, once you have all of your materials assembled, is to measure the distance from the nozzle of the flame projector to the ground. And I will use either um, imperial or metric, just based on which gives me the most accurate ruler measurement. In this case, it's the imperial side. And we're getting 7 sixteenths of an inch from the flame projector to the ground. The base is 1 16th thick, so we'll subtract that 1 16th from the 7 16th, obviously, and then we'll make sure that there's enough post so that we can drill a hole at 7 16th for the armature to go through. Um, and then we start sticking on our um, Woodland Scenics foliage to make the flame. This is a jeweler's miter box. This this tool is actually quite expensive, but I think there's cheaper versions. If you're doing any kind of scratch building, I would look into jeweler's tools because jewelry is also small, so all of their tools are designed for small things. This miter box allows you to cut at right angles or 45 degree angles, sheet or tube or rod. Uh, so obviously in a jewelry application you're using silver and gold through this, but you know these little plastic tubes fit in. I used to make jewelry, that's why I have all this stuff. And you can just make this nice and square so when I go to glue it to my base, you know the contact area is going to be as square as possible. This thing is going to stick straight up and my measurement is going to be very accurate. So when you subtract 1 16th from 7 16th, you get 3 eighths. So on this, I will mark up 3 eighths where the armature wire is going to go through. And I'll just use a pencil or, you know, you can use a fine tip pen. And we'll come up 1, 2, 3 eighths. And I'm just going to make a mark there. It doesn't have to be perfect either because you're going to have you know, the foliage kind of poofing out. So it's going to look like, you know, a flame jet doesn't have a straight sort of trajectory like a bullet or a tracer round or something. It's, you can afford to be a little off. But if you have it bang in the center, it's still going to look pretty good. And it'll probably look a bit better if you take the time to get it really close. So before I drill with a pin vise, I usually start with an X-Acto blade. Let's see if I can get this closer. Exacto blade. Hopefully, 
This is in focus for you guys. Sorry, it's hard to do this stuff and keep watching the camera as I'm doing it. Doing my best here though. So just put that in the center of your mark. Make sure it's in the center. And then just start to drill out a bit with the blade. And that'll make a good pilot hole so that your little tiny drill bit doesn't start slipping over the side and eventually snap. The next tool I would recommend if you're a scratch builder of any kind is calipers. I won't explain exactly how calipers work in this video because it'll go too long, but uh, you can also get digital calipers that'll just show you digitally. But there's an imperial and a metric. Um, I use the metric with my calipers because it's just easier. And this one is 0.45 of a centimeter. So knowing that thickness, I can get the appropriate drill bit. I bought these little drill bits at uh, an army surplus store, but I'm, I'm uh, certain you can get these, well, you can get these small drill bits from a jeweler supplier as well. And there's online jeweler supplies if you want to start getting into some of these jeweler tools, but they actually have a 0.45 drill bit, so that's exactly the size of my 17 gauge guitar string. I'm just going to pull it out with some tweezers here. Get it out, and then I'll get my trusty pin vise. I'm sure that I've shown you my pin vise before, but I would definitely recommend a pin vise too if you're going to do any scratch building or you know it comes in handy if you're changing heads on miniatures and posting them on. This will drill out the little posts very accurately without having to use a power tool which might be a little bit aggressive, make you slip and screw up and say lots of bad words. So you'd find your hole that you started, just place the pin vise there and obviously twist that sucker and you get this satisfying little bead of plastic that comes off. Sorry, it's probably not going to show up too well for you, but I'm just going to drill right through to the other side. If you wanted to be really particular too about the height, you should also account for some loss when you glue it because the glue will melt the plastic. Um, I'm not that anal though. I'm pretty anal, but not that OCT that I'm going to give a shit. Like I said, the, uh, the foliage is quite thick, so I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to account for some of that distance if it doesn't end up being exactly 7 eighths. So we have our hole through here, and then we'll place our armature through the hole first just to see how it goes. And that might be a bit tricky and you might say the odd bad word, but that's okay. Or if it's a weekend and you're not driving anywhere, I also also recommend a beer. So yeah, you'll pr place your armature through and I just sort of eyeball it on the base here and we'll place it in a way that uh, I sort of have a downward trajectory so that there's two points of contact. There's sort of the base which acts as a foot and then the front will be a point of contact so that it's not tipping all over the place. The base is quite heavy too compared to the materials that you're making the flame out of, so it's not going to fall over. And then it will also have contact with the vehicle at some point, even though it's minor. Um, you want it to be pretty stable, and it will be. It'll be quite stable, which is nice. So I'm going to glue this onto the base and cut the top. I'm going to use my little miter box again to cut the top, but I mean, that doesn't need to be a very square cut. I'm just going to do it because I can and then we'll move on to the next step. Actually, once again, I lied. I will show how I cut this off just because I, I just thought some of you fellas probably like tools and are into that thing and <laughs> into that kind of thing and like to see how they work. So basically with this miter box, you just put the piece in, you clamp it down with the uh, screws on the top and then I'm using a jeweler saw, which is another great thing to have for doing geeky hobbies. 
because you can saw really intricate, like very intricate shapes. Like when you see really intricate jewelry shapes, they've very often been cut out with a jeweler saw. And then you just cut it off and you get a nice square cut or like I said, 45 degree angle as possible in this too. Um, so yeah, check out jeweler supply websites if you're if you find any of this stuff that I'm using interesting because you'll find all kinds of stuff. You know, whatever you got to do, however crazy it might seem, you'll probably find a tool that will help facilitate whatever project you come come up with in your mind. So that's how the miter box works. I will glue the post to the center here and I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't need to be perfectly, you know, centered is good. It'll probably be pretty close to exact anyway. Jam the wire through. I'll just put a spot of um, crazy glue on the wire to hold it in place while we're pegging on the, the foliage. And once it's through the wire and I've determined where I want that to sit, I might go through with a pair of pliers and bend the wire carefully just to, just to make amends to the shape until it's the shape that I wanted. So I've bent the uh, wire carefully so that it lines up with the flame projector. It still has a bit of a downward arc towards the table, which you can't see at the end, but here it sort of slopes downward. And so the foliage will kind of touch at that end. Um, one thing I will say about bending, I didn't really show you bending it, but then when I was bending it, I thought, well, maybe I should show that. Um, don't hold it obviously by the post and then try to oh, yeah, bend it because you're just going to snap the post off because obviously steel is stronger than the plastic. So the way I get around that is just hold the wire and just make several small little bends as you go down, but hold the wire as you're bending it. You could even hold the wire with another pair of pliers if you have them and probably be um, even better. But uh, that's a safe rule of thumb for any metal bending. Metal bending always do in very small controlled increments. Um, don't try to get it all in the first bend because you're just going to make a really big mess. Um, so now that we have this, we're going to move on to adding the foliage to it. So when I do it, I'm just going to pin it on and slide it down and I'm not going to glue it initially. I'll, I'll glue the last pieces on and then I'm going to give the whole thing like a, a soak and uh, with, you know, like glue mixed with water. Um, so we'll get to that later though. There's a bit of a process there too. But right now we'll go ahead with putting the um, foliage on. So I just take out a big chunk. Some of the chunks are like in bigger... Um, they're in bigger, denser pieces, and that's the kind of piece you want. You don't want like a little fluffy piece where all the shit's falling off, because then it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of a, a flimsy thing when it's done. So I'm just reaching into the bag. Here, I'll get the shit out of the way so we can see. I'm just reaching into this bag and sort of giving each one a little squeeze. And when I find those big, dense clumps, those are the ones I'm going to select and tear pieces from that. Um, and then you'll have, you know, at the end of the day, you will have a stronger marker than have something with all these flimsy pieces falling off. But as mentioned, we are going to add some glue, like watered down PVA type stuff to it. I'm going to use Mod Podge or you can use the acrylic gel that I've showed you or anything like that to give it some, some strength. So around the middle too, I sort of roughly start at the end, which is the high point in this case. Um, the end will be like smaller and it's gonna get a bit bigger towards the top. Um, and I do it very gradually. I've seen people doing this and it's more pronounced, but that's, uh, you know, that's just personal style. Um, I kind of like the narrower looking stream and I also, I'll vary the, the thicknesses a bit too so you get a more interesting shape. Just be careful when you're pushing this on not to 
push too hard and then wreck all of the metal bending that you might have just done. I feel like this piece is probably too big for the middle, so I'm gonna take a few more chunks off. onto the wire armature. The next step is to sort of bind them together with glue. So I have this 90%, well it says 70%, but I put 90% in. I just kept this bottle because it has a sprayer on it, which is very convenient for hobby geek times. I'm going to spray the whole thing with isopropyl. And that'll act as a wetting agent. And then I'm going to take this um, Mod Podge mixed with water. Oh, get the freaking cat hair out of it. And that um, alcohol should carry it through the entire mass of. Um, oh. Once again, it's time to engage the painting sequence. You must pay attention attentively. We will begin with Tamiya flat yellow and paint the bottom flat yellow. And then I use clear red to paint the top. The clear preserves some of the tonal variations in the plump foliage. So use clear, or suffer the consequences. And then we use flat black to imitate the smoke. Let's begin. You may wonder why I'm talking like this. It's because I'm wearing my respirator. Now let's begin with the painting process. Flat yellow is what we begin with.
just on the bottom portion. Clear red. And this is just going along the top. Not going to be the hook. Just in case. My final color is black. I'm just hitting it along the top every once in a while. Don't get carried away. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this fun-loving video. Yay! Isn't the final step but I think the final step, you probably don't need a tutorial. The final step is to put the basing materials on your base. And you can just do that up however you like, with whatever materials you use to do the basing on your figures or whatever. Um, if you are interested in seeing a tutorial on basing how I do it, however, just let me know in the comments below and I'll probably fucking do it. Otherwise, I'll just keep on with this other weird shit that I'm doing. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's about it. <laughs>